Today I'm running through an aftermath evaluation of how the Hidden House Quilt Project went, and I hope you'll enjoy it. So now for an aftermath and overall evaluation of how things went. This is what is left of my project. So I have all of my scraps that I was working from, and this came completely out of my quilt stash. And then I have my map, my um, that is my little cartoon of the overall design that I was working from. And I didn't color these in in advance. I colored them in as I was using them so that I would keep an, an eye out for what I was working around so I didn't have too much of one color in one place on the quilt. Um, I used these continuously through the entire thing. And the reason why is the rows kept me tracking the rows that I was working on and the little cartoons uh, kept the information that I needed. What row, what number block, if I wanted to mirror something, and I've got to say, a couple of times I missed on the mirroring because I would have this laying out and I would look at it and in this, this hen happens to be going to the right, so I might have forgotten, sent one to the left. So a couple of times I missed on things like that. What made this so complex was I really wanted to keep the hens the same as we're in the pattern as far as the order, but I also wanted to track the block placement here. So as I've got blocks going through my quilt in a certain order, I wanted to keep that order all the way through. And that is the reason that I really, really needed to track my blocks. Now if I had had a design wall and I was working on that, that certainly would be another way to do this but I don't have one of those in my quilt space. Today I've got my notes out because I'm going to look back over some of the problems and the good things that happened with this quilt. So to start with, I really like the quilt. I'm very pleased with it. So that's a good place to start. The next thing that I want to mention is it um, measures out to, from, it's a square quilt, so it's 72 by 72. So it's a good size quilt. Let me see, what else? So it's 36 inches, the measurements. Oh, it's 36 blocks, excuse me. Um, problems that I had with the quilt. So the first problem that I had when I made this quilt was I only had enough fabric to make each of these blocks up here. So if I had messed up, I would have been picking out all of the, stat the, all of the stitches and redoing it because I, or waiting on more fabric to come in. So that was one of the problems I had. Another one of these problems that I had with this is I was working on this quilt during the begin beginning of the Rona. So with that in mind, I didn't get to, um, it took a long time for the backing and the batting of this quilt to arrive. I ordered the backing and the batting and it was two months before it came in. My machine broke while I was quilting it. That's a whole separate video, but I'll talk about that in a different video than this one. But anyway, that significantly took what should have been maybe a one day project during the quilting and made it much, much longer because there was a little bit of stress involved in that. So one other thing to mention is that I didn't make a video binding this quilt. I just completely forgot. But I will release a video, I will release a binding video that is a short tutorial on how to do the binding. And it will be on a placemat rather than a full-size quilt just to expedite the process in the video. So I just happened to think that I have shown the front of this quilt quite a few times, but I haven't shown the back. So when I, like I said, when I ordered this quilt, it took a long time for the backing and the batting to arrive and I, everything seemed to be out online for a while. So one of the things that I, I saw was, it looks like, see if I can get up and look at this. These look like they're pre-cuts for fat quarters and the whole set came this way. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video.